Hello, everyone. My name is Courtney Pollock, and I'm the Customer Marketing Coordinator for SWK Technologies. I'd like to welcome you to our webinar, Ditch the Invoice Chase, How to Simplify Your Stage HR, presented by Brandy Wilson and Kimberly Roma from Paya, a Nuve company. Before we get started, I want to go over a few housekeeping items. Everyone has been placed on mute to keep the background noise to a minimum. However, throughout the webinar, you can ask any questions you have. If you'd like to submit a question, look for the question section in your GoToWebinar, and we're gonna answer all those questions at the end of the presentation. In your GoToWebinar panel, you also have the option to zoom into the presentation layout, um, participate in those question areas for the Q&A, or download a copy of the presentation in the handout section. We're also recording this webinar and it's going to be distributed tomorrow to all attendees as well as those who registered but were not able to attend. And finally, we'd appreciate your participation in our poll and closing survey. With that said, we're thrilled that you've taken some time out of your busy day to be with us on this session. Um, SWK is always here to help you fulfill your vision of a smarter and easier way to run your business. And one of the ways we like to do that is by partnering with our great partners like Paya. Um, so whether you're here to explore a new solution or you're just here to learn, don't hesitate to ask any questions you have. So that's enough from me. I'm going to hand it over to Kimberly and Brandy for the main event. Thank you so much, Courtney, and thank you to the entire SWK team. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our call today. My name is Kimberly Roma. I'm the dedicated partner manager for SWK Technologies, our senior product manager, Mike Fields, and director of ERP products, Brandy Wilson, join us today as well. So you have some faces to the name, um, to the names up on our screen. Just a little bit of background because it can be a little confusing after the changes. So the Nuve brand has a long history and ties to Sage products. In fact, you might know that Nuve and Paya started as Sage Payment Solutions. Eventually it became known as Paya. And after our latest acquisition, we've merged with Nuve, which is a global payments company and powerhouse. Uh, today, we're going to present to you how our payment solution and exceptional functionalities will benefit your business and customers. Our native solution makes collecting payments simple, automates your AR processes, and allows your customers to self-serve, which makes getting your money faster. We're going to dive into a few, few of our products and highlight some very cool features available with our click to pay functionality. Brandy, if you don't mind to skip ahead. Thank you. Before we do that, I want to share a little bit about what our process looks like. Our process is fine-tuned and tailored to provide you with a seamless experience from start to finish. Initially, your SWK partner will connect with me to kick off your journey. In the beginning stages, we learn about your company, your workflows, any pain points that currently exist, and your needs. Our sales team spends time analyzing all relevant information to provide you with a competitive rate, a personalized demo, you our solution in real time based on those needs. And once you're satisfied, a quick application process will be started and your account is established. After that, our product team works with you to develop a timeline that works for you and your business when it comes to installation, training, and finally, the big event going live. Our full team is committed to supporting you from the beginning to the end and also beyond. We're with you every step of the way and as long as you are a customer. Um, of new base. So now I'm going to hand it over and introduce to you Brandy Wilson. Hi everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. Really appreciate you guys. Um, I am the director of ERP products for our Sage 100 and Sage Intact solutions. Um, and really that's just a fancy way of saying I work with our programmers to make sure that everything we're doing makes sense. So much of our integration is native or near native. We really wanna make sure that especially our integrated payments, um, it really is integrated. Um, so everything that you look at today will be embedded, fully integrated with full post back. And that becomes really important for your AR team because that's gonna make sure that they're not having any extra work to do. So let's talk about integrated payments. What does that really mean? That means taking payments directly within your Sage system, whether we're talking about Sage 50, Sage 100, Sage 300, or Sage Intact. Um, you can see a quick little uh, screenshot here, but realistically what we're talking about is vaulting or encrypting customer payment information directly inside of your ERP. 
completely PCI compliant. We make sure that you guys don't have to worry about that. But credit card and ACH accounts can be vaulted and then used inside of your actual SAGE transactions. Um, those transactions, depending on the system, include your AR invoices, your cash receipts entries in Intact, those are called posted payments. Your sales orders can be set up to both pre-authorize or take deposits, i.e. prepay. And you can take payments on sales invoices as well. All of this, because it takes place inside of Sage 100, is gonna automatically record the GL postings as part of the normal transaction process. So for those of you on Sage 100, if you were to pay a cash receipt with multiple invoices, when you update your cash receipts journal, all of those GL postings for accounting for the payment, accounting for you know, offsetting the AR, that all happens as a part of that update. So there's no extra steps there. Everything happens inside of Sage, and so we make sure that Sage is updated every step of the way. Now, just really quickly, I want to show you exactly how easy this can be. Um, so if I open up my Intax system here, and I come out to accounts receivable, and I check out an invoice, we have lots of invoices sitting out here. Anything that's posted here, I can do a view on, and what you're going to notice is that up in the upper right-hand corner, I have a button that says Pay with Nuve. And this is going to allow me to, one, confirm my amount that I want to pay, meaning I can do a partial payment if I'd like to. And it's going to launch out my payment screen. And this is where I'm going to be able to enter my credit card information from my customer. If I had a vault, I would not have to do this for, um, you know, for this customer. In this case, let's say the customer is working with me online and they've given me their credit card information and I go ahead and run this. Very, very easy, no big deal. It's pulling in all of the information from Intact, from this the customer. And when I choose to pay this, it's gonna go out to the gateway, make sure that it can do that, and then bring that information back and immediately refresh my screen so that I can see that payment information happen real time. So I can see that this was paid, I can see that credit card authorization number that the gateway sent back to me, and I have all of the transaction ID information. Now, why is this important? And this is true in all of our ERPs. It's important that we bring back that approval code and that transaction ID, because what you'll notice is that my pay with new bay button has become a void payment button. I don't even have to leave my ERP in order to void or refund this customer if they were to call me and say, oh, I paid with the wrong card or, oh, you know, we're sending this back. Whatever it happens to be, I do have the ability to void that directly within my system, meaning I don't have to go out to the gateway in order to process that and then hand enter that, that posted payment reversal inside of my ERP. I can simply click that button and it goes back to an unpaid invoice. And we make sure that all gets taken care of on the back end of the gateway as well. So that's what we mean by integrated payments. We mean keeping your AR team inside of your Sage system, regardless of which one it is, and making sure that they can do everything they need to do with payments. Paused here. There we go. So let's talk about the next piece of, of you know efficiency and and you know functionality that we can provide you. Um, we do have what we call Office of the CFO um, enhancements that we can provide for your company. So what is AR financing? Um, a lot of people conflate. AR financing with AR factoring. And they're not really the same thing. So let's talk a little bit about that. Um, AR financing does provide um, merchants with a reliable line of credit because you're borrowing against the value of your own AR. Um, Brandy, this, yes? I'm so sorry to interrupt. I can, are you screen sharing? Because I can't see. I, I think, am. No, thank I'm you for yeah. I think it dropped off. I just wanted to make sure. No, it, thank it, you. No, 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 thank you. Is that better? It 
never went away for me. Back in business, yes. <laughs> Thank you so yes, much. Yes, there we go. Technical challenges solved, so there we go. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so what does this mean? This is a great way to cover gaps in your cash flow. Now this could be maybe you are a multiple company um, entity where a child company may want to borrow against the AR of another company to cover seasonal cash flow issues or things like that. So what is this? This is a short term loan that borrows against your AR so that you can get that cash flow now. So obviously we want to use this on customers where we know they're good payers. Maybe they just have very long, um, you know, payment terms, things like that. And this system is so incredibly easy to use. Um, I'm actually going to pop out here and show you guys what this process looks like. Um, so I am in Sage 100 now. You'll notice down here in my account receivable, I have this new bay payments with Canmon. Canmon is a company well known in the AR financing industry. Um, we've partnered with them. And here's where, you know, we can really help you guys, um, you know, with this type of situation. Because again, we're embedded directly within your Sage 100. We are, you know, able to do all of the postings related to these short term loans. And this is how easy it is. I can come into my dashboard. I can fill out my information about my ownership and click enroll. And what's going to happen is we're going to launch a browser window that's going to allow you to go through the application process. And it's so easy. So we're going to ask questions. Obviously, this is something that you know your CFO or your finance manager may be looking at. We can answer these two questions. I can see if I qualify. And it's going to tell me immediately. Now I can continue to showing this information. Now it's going to pull in my information from Sage. So all of that information that I have on this front page is automatically being filled out. I'm going to click continue and I can go through and run through this application really quick. And again, very, very easily, whoops, except that I can't type. I can push through all of this information. Now, Canmon does everything through Plaid as far as the bank links go, meaning I can come out here and select any of my banks um, and connect them automatically. And so what does this let me do? This allows me to um, go ahead and attach my payment accounts so that Canmon can A, deposit my funds when a loan is approved, as well as remove those funds when I need to pay that loan back. So all of that again happens automatically so that we can do that. So I'm gonna click continue. I'm gonna go ahead and fill in my information here. Well, let's do a plus one. And Canmon is going to review my application and they're going to give me an answer via email in 24 to 48 hours. So we do this all very, very quickly. Um, and because I'm on a test system, I can actually just skip straight to my offers. Um, and so this is where the system is going to tell me what I've been approved for. I have a hundred thousand dollar credit limit. I can get 100% of my fee as or my AR as an advance rate, meaning um, if I finance a $1,000 invoice, I will receive that full $1,000. I have 30 days to pay that back at a 2% fee. I can also choose to do that same 100% finance rate with a 60-day payback for a higher fee. So this just gives us the ability to have a choice of, you know, are we willing to pay a little bit more in order to, you know, finance that for a little bit longer. Now, this is, again, a great way to do your cash flow because, again, we're keeping this super simple for you guys. I'm actually gonna switch companies here just so that you can see how easy it is to add an invoice here. So I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna go back into my financing dashboard. And what you can see over here is I have offers over here as well. When I come over to my issued products, I can see what my loan amounts currently are. I can see what my monthly limit is. And I can come over to the select button and select any one of my invoices that uh, that is applicable for financing. Things like it's not past the due date, um, you know, you know, the, the customers in good standing, all of that. So I can go ahead and select those. I can tell the system I want to finance them. 
And see, this is where it's going to tell me that my due date doesn't, doesn't jive with that. So I can't do that one. Um, but you can see here, we're, we're double checking everything. We're making sure that all of that is done. And then you do have a listing of your financed invoices that tells you this invoice has been paid in full. This invoice was funded. And when we look at these paid in full invoices, we can actually drill down to see the postings that are happening. So when we fund that invoice, we get to see the amount that came in as well as the loan amount payable and the service fees that are being applied. And when they take that money out of the account, I can also see that closing source journal where I'm going to update that cash on hand because it's being removed and I'm updating the loan payable to have a zero balance. So we're going to make sure that all of your GL tracking is all in place. And again, as automated as humanly possible, we're going to, you know, put the money in your bank. We're going to take that back out. Um, Kanban's going to handle all of that through their plaid integration. And we, um, on the new bay side, are going to record all of that within your ERP. Um, now, just a note on the financing. Um, this is currently available in Sage 100. We are in development to bring this integration to Sage 50, 300, and intact. So this is all coming um, for the other three, but you could get this for Sage 100 today. Now. And, you know, um, Brandy, I think we're going to jump in right here too, um, before we go further into some of these ways we can simplify the AR system. And we're just gonna launch a quick poll. So everyone out there in the audience, you know, we've been taught, we've dove in some, we've talked about the integrated payments um, and we just saw some of the financing options there. So we're curious to know, you know, what is the current pain point in your workflow? that you're most interested in solving? So is it time and manual processes, automation, customer self-service? Um, you know, it's probably for most people, it's a range of those things, um, but the one that, you know, it's most, most pressing for your business today. Thank you for everyone who's answered so far. We're gonna leave this open for just a couple more seconds um, and then dive right back in. And Kimberly and Brandy, it, you know, we started off strong with the a lot of people saying customer self-service um, and then kind of time manual pause, but automation is making a comeback. So we're pretty we're pretty spread across the board there with, you know, all three being major challenges. And that's not unusual, Courtney. We do see that a lot, um, you know, as we work with with our merchants, um, you know, all of these things do go hand in hand, you know, giving customers the ability to self service is going to save time on those manual processes and things like that. So it's all interconnected. We're all kind of in the same boat in a lot of ways. All right. So why don't we talk about some of those automation features? Now, we do have what we call the B2B commerce suite. Um, you guys may have heard of this referred to as click to pay in the past. Um, we have evolved so much beyond the simple click to pay functionality that we really kind of had to take this and turn it into a whole suite of goods. But let's talk about the AR automation side of that. Um, the road to a clear AR really is automation because the more we automate, the easier it is to manage our AR. We can move some of that account management labor, things like, you know, uh, collections and you know getting the invoices out to the customers, we can kind of move that off into either an automated process or push it onto the customers themselves. Now, in order to do this, um, I'm sure all of you know, communication is super important. We have what we call bi-directional communication between your Sage ERP, whether that's 50, 100, 300 or intact, and the Commerce Suite portal, meaning real time as you're updating invoices in your ERP, we're gonna sync those to the portal right then and there. If a customer makes payments, we're gonna sync that back into your ERP. If you have to make changes to your invoice on your side or your order on your side, we're gonna sync those too. So let's say we have an invoice that's been updated and we post a credit memo against it. Um, we are going to see that reflected in the portal and on the customer's links so that what they see is always what is currently reflected in of your Sage ERP's AR. Um, obviously, that's very important. You know, there are products out there um, where you it's kind of posted and forget it. It's, you know, once you've posted an invoice, it is what it is on the customer side and you can't change that. 
we've made sure that that communication goes both ways so that you can trust that what your customers are seeing um, on their portal or on their links is exactly what it should be. It's exactly what you reflect inside of your system. Now, that's all well and good, but if a customer you know, makes changes, that say they make a payment or they apply a credit, um, that's all gonna come back into your ERP. Um, and we don't make you do that manually. We have the ability to bring that back in so that it posts, let's say, a cash receipt entry for you in the exact same method that you would do a, a, a manual entry if you were gonna do that within your system. Um, and we're gonna make sure that you don't have to do that manual step. You review the, your posting journal, you update it, you're good to go. Now, the best thing that we can do in this case is make it easy for your customers to pay you, which sounds so simple. Um, but you know, the more a customer has to do in order to make a payment, the less they're gonna wanna do it. Cutting checks is not, you know, it's not a fast process. It's, you know, not something that people want to do anymore, but they also don't want to navigate a difficult website. They don't want to have to take any extra time to do that. Um, so what we do is we make it easy. So number one, we're going to send anonymous links to your customers so that they can click on a link and pay without logging in. Now, customers who don't want that ease, they want more account management, we have that option too. So we can give them an account management portal where they can get more information. They can see all of their invoices. They can look at credits and apply those. They can really kind of get, get down and involved in you know, their payment process. Um, so we put the ball in their court. We make sure that you know, they have the ability to do those account management pieces if they want to. And I know the smaller AR teams out there are gonna feel this. Um, collections can be such a project. Um, going out, you know, reviewing your AR aging, PDFing individual invoices or even statements, um, writing your individualized emails, reaching out to the customer in order to get that payment. It can be a battle. Um, and so what we've done is we have worked to give you a notification system directly inside the portal that's going to keep track of the upcoming due dates of your invoices, as well as those that have gone past due and they're going to send out notifications to your customers via email um, automatically saying, hey, this particular invoice number has a balance of X and you know, here's the link to go ahead and pay that because it's due in three days. Um, we're gonna try to make that as easy as possible for you guys. Every contact that the portal makes with a customer is gonna be able to include that anonymous payment link where again, they can make that payment without having to log Again, which is such a big thing for so many of our customers. And I know that was a ton of information, so let's break it down to exactly how this works. With our portal, you're gonna do your normal ERP entry process. You're gonna enter those invoices, you're gonna enter those sales orders, you're gonna create those customer statements. Your customer is then going to be able to do some level of self-service on that. We're either going to send anonymous links, whether that's through our notification system or if your ERP has a built-in notification system like Sage 100 has Paperless Office. We can go ahead and send that link that way. And we're gonna give them the ability to use a portal if they choose to. Um, so they can do things like review their payment history and apply credits. And we'll look at all of this in just a second. So once they've done that and they make their payment, we're gonna go ahead and synchronize all of that back into the ERP so that again, no extra steps for you guys, we're gonna have all of that tokenized information entered in for you. Okay, so how about we take a look at all of this? Now we talked a little bit about anonymous links. So I'm gonna close out my intact here. And let's, let's look at an anonymous link here. Um, an anonymous link can be sent to your customer in any way that you choose to send that, whether that's again, through the natively integrated email system that you may have, you can even copy and paste it. It's a really easy thing to do. Um, or we have a built-in notification system in the portal that can send these out automatically. Ultimately, the customer gets an email that says, hey, you have a new invoice, click here to pay. Obviously that's customized. You guys can decide exactly what that verbiage is. But what you're gonna see is they're taken to a payment page that is branded to you guys. What you're gonna notice, there is no Pi Anube logo here. Um, we're not going to confuse the issue. And Branding is a big part of that. We're gonna talk about that a little bit later. 
Um, so what you're gonna see here is, we're never gonna override your branding. You can put your logos here, and on the portal side, we'll take a look at some more branding options that you have. This is gonna give me the information about the particular invoice that this was generated for. So keep in mind, this is a one-to-one -one payment link. It is unique to this particular invoice. So I can see the customer, my customer number with, with Brandy's merchant account. I can also drill down to view the actual PDF. So I can get the original document. This is my Sage 100 sales order invoice and it's very ugly and I apologize. Um, but you can see here, I can get down to the actual original document. So this is um, you know, great for anybody who still does printed paper for their AP. We can, you know, the customer has the ability to access that and print that out. Now, because this is my anonymous link, anonymous really just means quick checkout, right? It, I just can make a payment without logging in. So we can see here, I've got my subtotal amount. Now in my system, I allow for partial payments, so I can change that. You're also gonna see one additional piece of our premium click to pay system. Um, and that is the processing fee recovery. So I have set up my system to charge a processing fee when my customer wants to pay via credit card or ACH. So you can see I have a 3% fee set up for my credit cards. And when I pop over to ACH, you're gonna see that screen live recalculate to go ahead and charge the $1.50 flat fee that I have set up. This is all completely user set up. Um, you guys can choose to charge a fee or not. Um, and you can you know, vary that fee from payment type to payment type. Customers can enter their card information and their billing address. And anytime we have card information going onto the screen, you're gonna notice that we are CAPTCHA integrated. So we can go ahead and um, just ensure a little bit of um, security there, making sure that we don't have any bots out here or anything like that. Um, now, instead of paying through my anonymous link, I want to show you guys the other option, which is giving your customers the ability to log into the click to pay portal. So again, anonymous links are great for the customers who want the easiest possible way to pay you. They can click on that link at their, you know, leisure and make that payment. But those who want to do a little bit more can have click to pay portal accounts. And when we look at this account, what we're going to see is an overview of exactly what this customer owes um, to Brandy Wilson's merchant account. So as the AP person um, at Customer Brandy, I can see a breakdown of my invoices that are outstanding, my sales orders that are outstanding, and my total unpaid. Now, this is actually gonna update based on whatever transactions you're syncing. Invoices, sales orders, quotes, statements, they can all appear within the portal. I can also get really quick access to my five most recent payments. So this is gonna show me what I have processed through either my portal account or an anonymous link um, at any point in time. So I've got my five most recent here in case I lost my email receipt, I can get a PDF version of that here. But if I need to go back further, I also have the My Payments tab. When I come to My Payments, you're gonna notice I've got a lot of payments out here. So I can see historically all of my payments that I've sent to the Brandy Wilson merchant account. Now, the cool part about this is, this is where our first bit of account management really happens. Um, so I am the AP clerk at Customer Brandy. I have gotten my uh, credit card statement for July, and I'm working on reconciling that to my AP. And I see a charge that I don't understand. I don't know how that number came about. I can go out to my portal account, come out to my payments, locate the payment that I'm questioning. So let's go ahead and look at the $7.23 one. I can drill down into that payment. I can see the individual payment, I'm sorry, individual invoices that were paid with that payment. I can see any tax or fee recovery that I was charged as a part of that. And I can drill down into those original documents. So maybe I'm missing this $1.23 invoice. I can drill down into that document. And again, we've got that lovely PDF. This one's a little bit better, um, where we can see that original document out of your guys's Sage system. So again, getting the customers to be able to do this type of historical research on their own when they have a problem, one way to kind of relieve the pressure from your AR team. Now, in addition to this, customers also have the ability to do um, their own stored payment types. Now, 
you know, in today's world, customers more and more want to be able to control their payment data. It's such an important part of, I mean, society anymore. Um, nobody wants to fill out a credit card authorization form anymore where they're literally writing that on a piece of paper. And more and more customers, you know, don't really even want to call in and give their credit card information because you never know what the person on the other line is doing. Not that they're not trustworthy, but more that if they were in the middle of something when you called to make your payment and they jot down your um, credit card information on a post-it, we've all done it. Um, you know, where does that post-it go? Is it just going to go in the trash without being shredded? Is it, you know, you don't know. And so customers really want to be able to control that information. And that's where having a portal really gives them that ability. They can vault credit card and ACH account information so that they can use that within the portal in order to make payments faster. But more than that, they get to control the data. They can edit it, they can delete it, they can add new ones. This is becoming a crucial part of taking payments online. Giving customers the ability to control their own payment data is um, it, it's just paramount in, in today's industry. Now, here's the cool part. Customer goes through all of this to go ahead and set that up. When they come to my activity, this is where they can use that information. So, you know, this screen is, there's a lot here. So let's, let's kind of take it all in. Up at the top, we have our different types of transactions. Invoices includes both invoices, but also credit memos, debit memos, and prepayments. We'll talk about that in just a second. We have sales orders, we have quotes, we have statements. All of these different transactions can be set up to sync in for your customers. And each customer can have a different setup. If you require sales order payments from one customer, but not from another, you do not have to sync sales orders up for the customer who does not pay against the sales order. So this is all completely customizable, even down to the customer level. So let's look at the invoices tab here because there's a couple things to note. Number one, everything that is past due has a red due date on it. All of that we're going to make sure pulls up to the top so they can see that. Obviously for customer Brandy, she does not care. Um, she's got a lot of outstanding invoices here that are past due. I can also see my past due total. And if I were to click the past due button, it's going to select all of my past due invoices and allow me to pay them together. So we're trying to make this as easy as possible for the customers too. Now, when we come back over to our credit memos and our prepayments, what you're going to notice is those do appear in a different color. We try to make sure that those stand out. Now, we're not going to allow the customer to refund themselves. So you'll notice that if I select both of my credits here, I do have a total amount selected of negative $377, but I do not have a way to process that as a refund back to my credit card. We're not gonna let the customers take the money back, but we can allow them to apply that against an outstanding invoice. So let's go ahead and select that one there. And you can see where it's taking that total invoice amount of 1085, it's applying that $377 and giving us a difference amount where we can go ahead and pay that difference via credit card or ACH, and then go ahead and um, process it that way. Now, when this comes back into your ERP with that kind of um, application, you will see it exactly as you would if you had entered that in by hand into your ERP. So let's talk about, say, Sage 100. We're gonna see each of those credits selected with the negative amount applied. We're going to see the payment come in and we're going to see the invoice for 1085 zeroed out with a zero balance. So everything is gonna update within your ERP in the way that makes the most sense for the way your ERP processes. And this is so easy to do guys. Um, so I'm gonna come out here, let's select um, a couple of invoices here. We'll get rid of some of these old ones for her. When we click begin payment, you're gonna be taken to a screen that looks very similar to what we saw on the um, anonymous link, but obviously we're selected more than one invoice here. So that's you know one benefit there. I can also use my saved card selection to go ahead and select one of these cards. So I can see that information come through and I can go ahead and pass my CAPTCHA and submit payment. Now, when I do that, we're talking directly to your PIA gateway we're going to get a confirmation back um, you know, pretty much immediately with that transaction number that's gonna be recorded to the customer statement as well as um, into your Sage system. 
And the customer now says, I have a receipt, I have a successful confirmation, I'm done. So we've done everything there. Now, of course, we're gonna bring all of that back into your Sage system as a cash receipt so that you can update it. But this is um, you know, one of the ways that we can really make payments easier for your customers and also offset some of that labor for your, um, for your AR teams. So talked a little bit about branding. When we look at things like the portal and the anonymous link, it's very important that we're not ambiguous for your customers. We want to make sure they know exactly who they're working with and that it's you and not us. Um, you know, they have to be comfortable in order to engage in this type of transaction. And we do a couple of things to really help you do that. Logos, obviously that's a big one. Like I said, when we were looking at the anonymous link, you don't see any Paya Nuve logos. It's all your logos. Um, you can also brand your portal. So when we were looking at the portal, you could see where that was set up a certain way, uh, the certain colorways along with my logos. I can personalize those communications. We talked about the fact that, you know, the portal can send communications directly to your customers. We want to make sure um, that that all is cohesive with the way that you communicate with your customers, your receipts, your notifications of new transactions, your um, collection notices, those can all be customized to your liking. And then the who is it, who is it from? Um, you know, everybody pays attention to email security nowadays. Everybody's very cognizant of who is sending me this email. Is this a legitimate email? Can I click on the link in this email? This is all really crucial in today's world because you know we're all taught about cybersecurity. We're all very vigilant about not clicking on emails um, from people we don't know. So we have given you the ability to make those portal initiated emails come from you and not from us. It can come from click to pay at merchantaccount.com, whatever it happens to be. You guys can set that up so that that is all happening the way that you want it to. Now, just super quick, I'm not gonna take a ton of time on this for you guys. I wanna show you the merchant portal. I wanna show you how easy it is to go ahead and update this branding. Um, and I, I'm going to apologize ahead of time. Um, anybody who's ever been on a demo with me knows I love to um, sear the irises of my customers. So let's say that I have a new logo that I wanna implement on my portal. I can come out here, I can go ahead and grab my new logo, look at my beautiful orange logo. I wanna make it as big as possible. I also want to brand my bar. Um, so let's go with a green bar. I will try not to blind anybody today. Um, we'll go with a green bar. And um, I really wanna pull in that, that orange for my text. I can do that here too. Now this becomes so easy and it's a great way to reinforce your brand presence on the portal. Now you can do things like changing the actual font. So I can update this to match what my, let's say my letterhead looks like. I can make it bold, I can make it bigger. I can do all of this directly within my portal. And when I hit save, this is going to take effect immediately. We're just gonna update that. And anybody who accesses their portal is going to see this new logo and my new iSearing green bar. Um, we can also do things like update the net side navigation menu as well as the color of certain buttons. Now the payment page is gonna update with my new logo as well. So that's all gonna come through very easily. And I can do that same color and font change here on the payment page as well so that that's all in sync. So again, we're trying to make this really easy and it, it really is you know hard hitting on your customers to make sure that they know who they're working with, to make sure that they know this is legitimate and that they can move forward with this payment. In addition to that, of course, you have the ability to customize your receipt. You can see here, I keep a very simple receipt, but I have um, merchants who come out here with their marketing teams. And instead of just a logo at the top, they put a clickable banner that sends customers out to the website for new events, new services, new products. Whatever it is that you want to get out to your current customer base, this can be a great place to do that. And of course, you can add more verbiage for things like, you know, for inquiries on your invoicing or your payments, you know, email ar at merchantaccount.com. 
Um, so we're gonna make sure that you guys can communicate everything that you need to communicate on that receipt. And we talked a bit about notifications. So in this system, you can also set up your notification forms. So here's an example of an email that I might send out for a new transaction that's been uploaded into the portal. As soon as I do my sync from my ERP, um, which is automatic, the system will send out an email to the customer that says, hey, customer, um, your new invoice, invoice 1234, in the amount of $100, has posted to your account. I can hide that anonymous link behind my Pay Now button, and I can present that to them in the email automatically. This same process can be used for your collections. So we can do a custom setup um, timeline where you say 10 days before the due date, five days before the due date, one day before the due date, we send out a reminder. We can also do that on the other side. So one day past due, 10 days past due, 15 days past due, final notice, Mr. Customer, I am going to charge you a late fee of X percentage and show that calculation. Um, so it can be a great way to just get information out to your customers for that. Now, if there are customers who you do not want that to happen to, um, you do have the ability to opt them out of notifications so that they don't get those. So it can be, you know, I know that relationships um, are, of course, you know, very unique from customer to customer. And there are going to be some customers that you don't want to receive these types of communications, and that's fine. We give you the ability to control that as well. So I'm gonna pass it over to Kimberly here. Thanks, Brandy. Thank you. Um, all right, we've seen a lot today. Um, kind of to wrap us up, we hear you, we see your pain points. Thank you to everybody who completed that poll to give us a good idea. Honestly, with our solution, we're gonna hit a lot of these pain points for you. You're gonna accelerate the growth of your business by providing your customers with a top experience, including the self-serve functions that we've seen today and a full account management portal with um, some of those really great features that Brandy just showed us. You'll improve your back office operating margins by removing the manual processes and human error that I know there's some concern around. You'll also have faster payments for you. Because of our easy and flexible payment options, customers manage their accounts. It reduces the back and forth communications for your team. Next slide, Brandy. Just to kind of, again, Pull us to the end. Uh, we've gone through at a very high level to show you what our solution offers. I hope you've seen something of interest. If you did, please reach out to your SWK partner and we'll coordinate a dedicated time to connect with you. When you schedule a meeting as a thank you for spending some time with us to discuss your needs, we're happy to send you a coffee card on us. Again, thank you guys so much for your time today. We're so happy to have the opportunity to show you our solution and happy to take any questions. Yes, thank you, Kimberly. So um, we've had a couple questions come in throughout the presentation, so that's great. Um, if you haven't had a chance to put your question in yet, you can put it in the questions section of the GoToWebinar, um, and we're gonna dive into those in just a second. And in the meantime, while we're doing those questions, we just would like to ask, you know, what are your next steps? So um, Kimberly just mentioned that um, meeting and coffee card so if you'd like to take advantage of that get your ten dollar coffee card and at the same time get some great information about how um pious a new bay company can help you you know with your specific needs let us know and then kimberly and brandy you know right as we're going into q a i do have some questions for you so you guys ready to dive in absolutely yep okay Great. So can, one of the first questions we had is, can you um, explain some of the key differentiators um, for when someone processes with Nuve versus, say, another another company? Absolutely. Kim, do you mind if I take that one? Go for it. Awesome. Um, you know, one of the things that we, we talk about a lot, um, you know, internally is the fact that my department, the product department, is really built on listening to our customers and not just um, you know, faux listening, where we, we kind of take a listen and then maybe we don't um, follow through. Our entire platform is built on our merchant suggestions, our merchants coming to us and saying, 
I really wish, you know, customers could do this, or I really wish a portal did that. Um, we listen to that and we roadmap and we do it. Um, our product leaders are experts in their ERPs. Sage 100, Sage Intact for me. You'll notice I, I reference Sage 100 a lot. I've been doing it for 26 years. Um, Mike is the Sage 50 and Sage 300 guru. Um, so we are really um, knowledgeable about the ERP. We, we always say that our team is ERP first, payment second, because ultimately what we can't do is come into your process and mess it up with payments. That It doesn't make any sense, right? So our key differentiator is one, we know your ERP as well as you do, and we're going to make sure we're not you know, messing with any of those uh, processes. And then number two, we're going to listen and we're going to implement the things that you guys are asking for, which is it's it's such a great thing that we're able to do because we have our developers on staff. They're with us. They know the product as well as we do. And we're going to make sure that everything works the way that it should. Awesome. You know, and when you talked about those, you know, customer requested features and such, we had someone ask, you know, is the customer portal automatic to all customers or is that something you can turn off for specific customers? There is absolutely a choice on the merchant side. So on your merchant account, you actually do have the ability to choose whether or not customers can create their own accounts or not. Um, so we simply can take that option away. And even if we do that, you as the merchant still have the ability to, to create accounts for your larger terms customers if you choose to do that. Um, so you can take away their ability to create a new account on their own while still maintaining the ability of creating account for them on your side. That's great to know. Um, another question we had come through, which I think we get, you know, in most sessions is, you know, what is the cost for implementing application and implementation, sorry, um, application and training? Randy, I can take this one. Awesome. So I can be a hero, right? Because the great news is there's no cost for any of those things. What our team looks at, they take a lot of consideration on I'm looking at what you're currently processing. Um, they take into consideration other functionalities. But when it comes to the application, the installation and implementation and the training and even the care after you're live, um, there is absolutely no cost. Um, but any, you know, if anyone is interested in during those meetings, we can absolutely look at what you're processing now and um, and basically get you to a very competitive rate when it comes to the credit cards. Okay, and I think we have time for one final question, um, unless I see something, you know, else come through from the audience out there. But, um, you know, I think we'd have some people that would like to know, you know, how long does implementation typically take? So I could take that one. Um, my team is the team that would work with you guys um, should you choose to implement. Um, and the timeline really is based on, on you. Um, every project is a little bit different. Of course, every system is a little bit different. Um, you know, a larger Sage system may take the time to go through a sandbox system in order to make sure that any other master developer changes or add-ons, you know, work together. And we will absolutely work with your Sage bar for that. Um, we will make sure that we've, we've got all of that handled prior to your go live. So my team is going to be with you from start to finish. And we utilize, you know, your guys' schedule. We give you the ability to schedule your um implementation your training your demos directly onto our calendars um when you're ready so we have some people who've implemented in as little as two weeks from signing their application to being live and some take a longer road they want to make sure that they got you know their reporting set up again compatibility with other um applications that might be inside of their system and so those you know it may push to three weeks it may be four you know, maybe in the middle of summer, you know, somebody's on vacation. So we work on your timeline. Um, generally speaking, I would say our average is a week and a half to two weeks. It really just depends on how you guys like to do that implementation. Okay, that's great to know that there's, you know, different types of flexibility there. 
So that looks like it's all of our questions from the audience today. So thank you for everyone that um, asked some questions during the Q&A session. We always love to be able to answer anything we can while live. Um, with that, we just want to say thank you for taking some time out of your day to be with us on this session. Um, thank you, Kimberly um, and Brandy, for giving us a lot of great information and in diving into how Paya can help simplify the AR and SAGE. So thank you, everyone, and we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And don't forget to, you know, let your, if you want to take advantage of this um, follow-up meeting and that free $10 coffee card, reach out to your SWK rep, reach out to us at info at swktech.com or let us know in the follow-up survey and we'll get you connected. Thank you, Courtney. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.